This is a mathematical mystery. Does this work? Yes, this works. Um, so this is something that I have been talking about a little bit with uh, Travis Scholl and Dan Schumo. So, mystery. So, uh, as you may notice from my shirt, I've been getting into blockchain recently in my way. Um, and uh, as a side effect of a paper that I was working on recently, uh, we ended up looking for colliding ECDSA nonces in the Bitcoin blockchain. And if you do this, uh, you notice that 99% of the repeated ECDSA nonces, which gives you the private key, are this value, which happens to be uh, n minus 1 over 2, where n is the order of the elliptic curve used for uh, Bitcoin. So this is an interesting thing, what's going on. Um, so it turns out that the x-coordinate of this value times the generator of the curve, uh, which is the same as the uh, x-coordinate of a half times the, this point, has 166 bits, it's this value, um, instead of 256 bits. So that's interesting. Uh, this has been known to sort of the Bitcoin crowd for some time, and they're all like, dude, this magic value decreases my transaction costs. Great. <laughs> Every time I give a talk to a, a room full of mathematicians about this, they're like, wait, what? <laughs> this, this makes no sense. Like, how is, this, how is this even happening? There's no way that this is, this is random. Uh, but also, this is not documented in like, the specification for these curves. So, OK. Um, it turns out that if you look at a half times the generator, the x-coordinate for the half times the generator, for all of this family of curves, the prime order uh, Koblitz curves um, from sec 2, um, they have the same property. So I mean, okay, for a 160-bit curve, you would expect to have a 160-bit uh, x-coordinate, but the rest of them are all small. And in fact, they all share almost all of their bits in common. So, okay, if you look at uh, sort of the, the SAC2 standard that was produced by Certicom, um, this is all they say about the generation of these curves. The recommended parameters associated with a Koblitz curve are chosen by repeatedly selecting parameters embedding an efficiently computable endomorphism until a prime order curve was found. Repeatedly selecting parameters. They don't specify like how they selected these parameters. Um, so you sort of the, the natural uh, generation procedure that you would expect for this kind of curve is that you choose some prime modulus, um, you choose some curve parameters and you check whether they have all the properties that you would want, then you count some points and you hope for a prime order curve and you sort of stop when you get um, a prime order group. And then at that point you, you search for a, a generator of this group and then you, then, then you, then you publish in a standard. So, okay, um, this 160-bit value that uh, you, you find, I mean, we can hypothesize that this is a SHA-1 hash of something. It, you know, if this is generated in 1999, um, then that's 160-bit hash function, so it seems natural. Um, maybe the most and least four significant four bits have been changed since they're different in, in all of these points. Um, the other curve uh, generators seem to be, have been produced by changing the most and least significant four bits and appending some uh, digits to the most significant bits. Um, there's a mystery here, which is that you, do, you would expect to only need to try two values to get a valid point on the curve, so why, why so many changes? Why are they appending so many digits? Um, and then another unsolved mystery, why did they double the point to get a generator? Uh, because you, know, you could have just published, the, like, use the original hash, hash value if it's a nothing on my sleeve value. Um, however, this property doesn't seem to be known to aid in computing elliptic curve discrete log in any way, so there doesn't seem to be any advantage to having this kind of structure for either attackers or defenders. So, we have no idea if this is some kind of backdoor. It doesn't seem to be. But this does seem to be some kind of doc, like undocumented artifact from the generation procedure uh, that sheds some light on how the generators were uh, chosen, uh, which is not documented in the spec. So uh, if you would like to contribute to our understanding <laughs> of this problem, uh, did you work at Certicom in the 90s? It would be great to chat with you. Um, we have talked to Dan Brown, and, and uh, he did not know that this had this property. Um, and otherwise, do you have any GPUs, and can you help with SHA-1 brute forcing? So there's 256 possible values if we assume that the most and least significant four bits have possibly been changed. I've been running uh, John the Ripper, but um, I don't ha really have GPUs, and my cluster is down right now, so I don't have that many CPUs either. Uh, so <laughs> if you 
if you have, uh, if you would like to run things, then, then that would be exciting too. We, we might hypothesize that this has been, um, there's some ASCII seed, but we don't know what it is. Thank you. <laughs>